Today, I want to show you how to construct rolled handles like this for leather bags. Handles are an important part of a leather bag that can really make or break the look of a nice bag project. This handle also marks the start of the crafting of my handbag project, which I've already started with pattern creation and paper prototyping. I will leave a link to that video in the video description. There are two main approaches when making a rolled handle. The first approach is one I will be using today, which is to prepare a complete pattern and punch all your stitching holes before you start construction. This is the simplest construction method as it does not require much glue and all the stitching hole positions are planned out. The other approach uses a more general type pattern and requires you to punch your holes, stitch and trim the handle after gluing. I will talk more about how this second approach works towards the end of the video. Now, let's get started. This is the bag handle pattern I will be using today. The width of this section here is made to fit for a 25mm rectangular ring, like these solid brass ones. And the width of this section is designed for an 8mm core material, with stitching holes set 3mm offset from the edge. For the core, I will be using this 8mm leather cord, which I find is best to use as you can easily taper it with a skiving knife. You can also use rope, but it is a bit more difficult to taper the ends. The first step is to cut out the paper pattern and join them together with scotch tape to create the full length of the handle pattern. The leather that I will be using today is this blue vegetable tan leather, which is around 2mm thick. I will use the pattern to roughly cut off a small section of leather to make it a more manageable size. And then stick the paper pattern onto the leather using scotch tape. I will punch out the stitching holes of the pattern before cutting out the leather outline. But you can also punch in the holes after trimming. Then carefully cut out the leather using the pattern outline. I will skive the ends of the leather down to around 1 to 1.5 millimeters, which will make this section a bit easier to bend when it comes to stitching later. Next, I will paint and finish the section of the handle that will wrap around the brass rectangular rings. For edge paint today, I will be using this vernis in a black color. Apply 2 to 3 layers of edge paint with sanding in between layers to get it smooth. With the painting on the edge complete, the next step is to cut the leather cord to length. It needs to extend from the first stitching hole across the last stitching hole on the center section. I will now apply some contact cement to the center of the leather and to one side of the leather cord, which is optional for this method, but it keeps the two sections together when stitching. Once the contact cement is tacky, I can stick on the leather cord to the handle. The next step is to taper off the ends of the leather cord. I will start to taper in line with the shoulder of the pattern up to the end. A Japanese skiving knife is best for this tapering. This is how the handle should look like. Now it is time to stitch the center section. For the thread, I will be using this Vinimo MBT number 8, which is a bonded polyester thread around 0.4mm thick. I have now set up the handle in my stitching pony. I have 8 stitching holes on the outside end of the leather. So I will start stitching the center section on the 8th hole here and stitch until the same hole on the other side. Now I will saddle stitch the handle with two needles on a single thread. You can start by leaving the first few stitches loose before tightening them up later. When stitching, you should keep checking that the two leather edges are aligned properly before tensioning the threads. This is the middle section complete, up to the same hole on the other side. 
Now I can start on the ends of the handle. When it comes to stitching, most handles are done with a double loop running around the outside of the edge like this. This is optional, but it makes the base of the handles look more interesting. Continue the saddle stitch around the edge, making sure the two edges are kept aligned to each other before tensioning the stitches. When you reach the end, you can finish by again looping the thread around the edge, then putting in some back stitches to hold the thread in place. Then, cut off the thread ends, apply heat, and then press them down to lock them in place. Now it is time to finish the edges off. Use sandpaper to sand the edge until it's smooth especially around the transition area. You can finish the edges of a handle with edge paint or burnishing, but edge painting is the more common edge finishing method with bags. After applying a thin layer of edge paint, I will use a hot creaser to smooth down the paint. Then sand and repeat until you get a smooth edge. And finish it off with some wax and buff it with canvas cloth. This is how the completed bag handle looks like with all the edge finished smooth. This handle pattern gives a height underneath the handle up to the end of the leather here of 12 centimeters. You can adjust the length of the middle section of the pattern to get your required handle height for your bag. Now let's take a look at the alternative method for making rolled handles that I mentioned at the start of the video that looks like this. The difference is that the middle section of the pattern is not cut to design and the excess material in the center will need to be trimmed after stitching. For this method you will need to apply glue to this middle section then stick the two halves together. The good thing about this pattern is that it is more flexible and can work with many different core sizes. You can use core diameters from 6mm to 10mm as when you glue it in place it will always give you a nice round shape. After that you can mark in your stitching line, punch your stitching holes and then stitch this center straight section first. Then you can trim off the excess leather from the sides and you'll be at the same position as the method from earlier. When it comes to the ends of the handle they can be glued and then stitching holes all in or you can punch in the holes first so glue will not be required. This method is a bit more complicated than the method I used in the video but it doesn't require as much planning when designing the pattern. I hope you found these instructions and pattern helpful and that they help you designing and making your own bag handles. This handle is now the first part of my handbag project complete. I will continue making videos on the handbag project so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss them. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and comment and I'll see you next time.